Hi, welcome to JustFrugalMe.com. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon for more updates. Hello, everyone. This is Joshua coming to you from JustFrugalMe.com. Today, we're going to talk about how do I build my emergency fund. First, let's talk about what an emergency fund is. An emergency fund is one of those accounts that you set aside for a rainy day. When you may be in between jobs, you lose your job, uh, health issues where you may not be able to bring in money or you might have to pay out money for your health, repairs on your home. Those are called emergencies, okay? That's what you would use your emergency for. Christmas, birthdays, anniversaries, Sell over JCPenney and Sears and Roebuck and Company? Let me just let y'all know now, those are not emergencies. Ding dong, piece of man ring the door. Oh my God, I don't have a tip. Y'all, that's not an emergency, okay? Just want to be clear about what an emergency is. Why do you need to have an emergency fund? Good question, I'm glad you asked. Having an emergency fund, y'all, is great because then you don't have to go out and get a loan or put money on credit. That may be the reason that you're in the financial situation that you're in now. Just saying, I don't think it's a good idea. If you borrow money to get out of an emergency, but then you create a bigger financial emergency because now you can't pay the bills back for borrowing the money in the first place? Look here, you need an emergency fund so you don't have to rely on credit cards when you need your money the most, all right? So how would it feel if your HVAC system went out at home and you got slapped with a $10,000 bill? But how would you feel if you had twenty, thirty thousand dollars in the bank? It would no longer be an emergency, really. It would just be merely an inconvenience. When you have an emergency fund, it's not an account that's going to draw a lot of interest, but you call it your assurance fund that you can rest assured that when something happened that you don't have to stress about the financial aspects, trying to call around seeing how you're going to get the money. Where should you keep your emergency fund? I can tell you where not to keep it. Do not keep it in a checking account. You will be walking down the mall one day. You're going to look over at Auntie Anne's pretzels and that cinnamon and sugar and butter pretzel going to be smelling so good. Oh, no, I don't have money on my regular card, but I do have my emergency card. You don't want an emergency fund account where you can get to it just like that. However, you want money in an account where you can get to it without problems. So those type of accounts that I keep my emergency fund in would be a money market account or a savings account. Okay. Why? Because you can get to the money quite easily, but not easily enough where you're out at the mall and need to get to the money. I actually keep my emergency fund in a separate banking account that's out of state where I do not have a card for. That if an emergency break out, I have a checkbook. I can write myself a check. I can write the person a check. If I do a transfer, it's going to take two to three business days for that to clear. That way that give you time to sleep on it, things like that. You don't want to spend off an of impulse. I would choose one of those type of accounts. This is the big question here, y'all. How do I start building my emergency fund? I have a few things here for you. One, set a goal. If you are going to go on a trip, the first thing that you would want to know is your destination. After you know your destination, you will want to plan 
accordingly. You need to have a goal. You need to have a vision of where your emergency fund should be in a month from now, in six months from now. What are my goals for the next year? Number two, consider selling things online. I'm real big of, you know, e-commerce. You have 177 million customers worldwide to market your product to. You have some things laying around the house that you know you don't use anymore. Consider selling that on eBay, Amazon, Craigslist. I'm not endorsing these people right now, but I'm saying there's a lot of different resources and platforms that you can sell online. Number three, consider selling a vehicle. All right. My wife and I, we had three cars before. My wife and I had three cars. Y'all see that? My wife and I had three cars. Meaning that one of them wasn't really being used as much. A few minutes, we sold the, the extra car. And then we were able to use that money to settle the debts. So what I'm saying is if you have a car, a motorcycle, a bike, motorbike, a boat, anything like that, that you can go back and sell and get quick cash off of it, do it. It's just a car. You can buy another car. It's just a boat. Oh, but I want my boat. Listen, it's just a boat. You can buy another one once you are financially stable. And think about the insurance that you're saving, the gas that you're saving. Did I say the insurance again? Because insurance is high. I just got off the phone today with my insurance guy. and He told me that car insurance in the area is going up about 23%. And you know what I said? Rate me with somebody else. Y'all understand, it's good to shop around. That's just a side note. The next one, unplug your electrical devices. Y'all see this sucker right here? This is my phone. All right? It used electricity. Ooh. If you didn't know that, now you know. You have an iron that will use electricity. You have a printer that will use electricity. You have lamps that will use electricity. You have TVs that use electricity. Y'all, everything that's electrical in your house uses electricity. Hmm. Electronics use electricity. If you're not using something, consider unplugging it or you can get a smart strip. Look at the description below. I will leave one down there for you. Get one that when you're not using it, it will not use any current. All of those currents are running and it uses a lot of energy. So therefore, unplug it, look in the description box below, get you a smart power saver and all of that extra money that you will be saving, throw it toward your emergency fund. The next one, consider cooking at home. Y'all, the average restaurant charges you four to five times, at a minimum, more than what they paid for it. Just think about it. They're making money off of you. If you pay $100 for a plate that's like a $100 plate, the most they pay for some of that stuff, if I go based off of the four, times is $25. But I mean, that's if it's a very generous restaurant. Consider cooking at home. You have a lot of good recipes at justfrugalme.com. Great recipes. I'm going to put the link right here. Great homemade recipes and idea at a great price and take all of that money that you save and go back and put that into your emergency fund. Next, you can cut expenses. Think about all of the things that you spend and a lot of those are wants, not needs. You can go back and cut out for 40 days. Go to justfrugalme.com, justfrugalme.com. I just wrote a post, Just Frugal Me Challenge. 
And I dare you, even right now, just to go and take that challenge and over the next 40 days, just cut some of your expenses out and put all of that savings back into your emergency fund. So there is no excuse that you cannot do this. You can do this. Look at yourself. Put your hand on yourself and say, self. And yourself say, huh? You can do this. I can do this. Next, save your tax refund. If you are running a little short and you know that you're already getting about a thousand, two thousand, three thousand dollars back, because when you're when you get a refund, you're pretty much giving the government free money that they don't have to pay interest on. That's just a sidebar. However, don't just splurge. Some people are like, ooh, I got my tax refund while we going shopping. You got to spend your money in moderation. All right? So take that tax refund and go back and apply that to your emergency fund. Y'all, you are in an emergency. If you do not have an emergency fund, you are not covered. I'm not saying do this for the rest of your life. I'm saying do this until you are financially stable with your emergency fund. It may only take a few weeks. You must first look out for your family. Don't let something happen. The best way that you can tell your family is that you love them is making sure that they are financially secure. You want that assurance fun. So make sure you get it st stacked up today and stop delaying. The next, you, you have to adjust your budget. Just say that you have a $500 set aside for a gas bill or all of your utilities. If you can adjust your thermostat two degrees up, two degrees down in the winter, up in the summer and save that money, it may seem insignificant now, but I'm telling you, $10 in savings, $10 over 12 months is $120. What can you do with $120? If you do that just with utilities, save $120, then you go back and call the cell phone company and say, I have been paying my bill on time. I need a great deal from you. And I'm not under contract because I'm not going to sign my life away to being locked to you financially. And they cut that down by another $20. You just saved $240 just right there every single year. You can do this. Last but not least is that you want to make cutbacks. You got a habit of eating too many potato chips? Cut back. You have a habit of going out to the club every other night? Maybe just go on the weekends. You got a habit of eating too many sweets, cakes, Twinkies? Make a cutback. Whatever your cutback may be, make a cutback and take all of that savings and put it back into your emergency fund. You will be surprised at all that you will save and you will look back and say, wow, I did that. I did it for my family. I did it for a better future. I did it for assurance. When something happened that I didn't have to stress about it, the most stress that I have is making the appointment. This is the type of stuff that your emergency fund can bring to you. The assurance that you can live your life and stop slaving away at a nine to five every single day when you can have money stacked back. I'm not saying quit your job. That's, I'm not endorsing that. If you need the job to get by, work. But I'm saying when those things happen, that you can have the assurance that I don't have to stress out about this. All right. Remember that being frugal is not being cheap. It's just being resourceful. Have a great day. And don't forget 
if you have more ideas, only nice comments. I only need positive energy, y'all. Just comment in the section below. Share and like with your friends, especially the ones that will benefit from this. Have a great day. Bye-bye.